today we're gonna build a simple in-game user interface using Godot engine. You're gonna learn how to create panels, images, texts, progress bars and finally buttons with some simple interaction. If you have previous experience with Unity UI system, fear not, Godot control system is very easy. I will be showing Unity alternatives for all the things we are doing along the way so that you will feel at home. In case you don't have Godot installed just yet, simply go to the official website, click download playtest and then Godot engine. That should download an application for your operating system. After installation, you will be greeted with this screen. Press new project, select the path for all of your Godot projects, then give it a name and click create folder. That way you will have a nice project structure. As for the renderer, if you're doing 3D desktop stuff, select forward plus. Otherwise, go with the mobile option. Click create and edit. As you can see, the editor window is quite similar to the one in Unity. Here you have main editor, you can switch between 2D and 3D. Here you can find file system. Here is a scene hierarchy. And finally, here you can find the inspector tab that will allow you to modify different settings. Let's start by creating our first scene. Here on the left, under create root node, select user interface. We can immediately save it as well. Just press Ctrl or Command S and name it main.tscn, which is a Godot scene file. You can find it here. Now time to create our first component on the scene. In the scene tab, click plus button or command A to open the new node window. As you can see, here we can find all possible nodes that will be put on the screen. The most important ones are those three groups. Node 2D used to create 2D game elements, Control used for the user interface and Node 3D for the 3D elements. Today we're gonna focus on the green ones which are all about the UI. Let's start with the panel. You can either find it or simply search for it. We can describe panel as a container for other UI elements with fill color. Think of it as an image without any texture or sprite in Unity. Here in the 2D view, we can already see it. Let's resize it a bit and put it 24 pixels from the edge of the screen. You can find this value while dragging here or you can manually edit it by clicking in the inspector Layout Transform Position. Finally, I will rename this panel to Player Info Box. Next, let's create another panel that will be a frame for our avatar image. Right click on Player Info Box, select Add Child Node, and go with the panel once more. That way, we've created a child node that is tied to its parent. Name it Avatar Frame. I want it to always be on the middle left side of the player info box. For that, we can use Anchor presets. They work exactly the same as in Unity and allow us to stick components to the screen or the parent side, corner, or even resize them to fill the whole width, height, or both. Click the small green circle at the top and select Left Center option. That way, our box will always stay on the left side of the parent. Now let's move it a bit from the edge and make it bigger. Just like that. My only problem is that this frame is now not really visible. Let's change its color. Click on Avatar Frame and in the inspector go to the Theme Overrides, Styles and instead of Empty, click New Style Box Flat. Now to edit the style, simply click on it. It may seem a bit confusing, but we can now modify many useful properties. I'll change the background color to white and modify corner radius. I'll change it to 4 pixels for all sides. By the way, I love that this feature is built in. In Unity it was quite a tedious task, which I created a whole video about. Now that you know how to change panel properties, I would suggest you pause this video right now and also modify the properties of the player info box. Alright, here is what I did. I changed the color of it to this nice red color, added corner radius of 6, 
added a bit of shadow. I hope YouTube compression won't destroy it. And added this white border from all the sides. Perfect. Now we can move on to the second component, an image. Right click on avatar frame, click add child node and search for texture rect. It will also be a rectangular shape, but this time we'll be able to fill it out with an image. Call it avatar. I'll change its anchor preset to center and resize it a bit. To fill it out with our texture, we need to import it first. The easiest way will be to just drag in your image to the project file system. Then let's make sure that the avatar is still selected and drag in our image to the texture field in the inspector. As you can see, my image is a bit bigger than our frame, but we can easily fix that by changing expand mode to ignore size. And here it is, nicely placed avatar image. Before moving on, let's prepare a similar frame for our coin container. As an exercise, here is a task. Create a similar container to the player info box. It should be smaller and always on the top right of the screen. Pause the video and try it now. All right, hope it went well. In my case, I won't be creating it from scratch. I'll simply use the duplicate option. Let's rename it to Coinbox and its children accordingly. Change its anchor to top right, change its position, resize it a bit and change the object's properties inside. Notice that if I try to change the color of this rectangle, it will also change the color of the first player info box. This is because for both shapes, we are using the same theme details. To override that in theme overrides, styles, click this small arrow and select make unique. That way I can now change the background color without modifying the other one. Here of course we wouldn't like to have a player avatar but a coin instead. What is great about Godot is that it not only supports a raster graphics like PNGs or JPEGs but also a vector graphics, specifically SVG files that allow infinite scale change. For example, we can visit gameicons.net and search for coin. Here is the one that I like, so I will click on it, change its background to none and download SVG. Then import such a file to Godot and change our coin texture. Because our image is white, I will make it a child of a coin box, get rid of the frame and scale it a bit. In case your SVG file is pixelated, select it in the file system, go to import tab, change scale to something bigger and click reimport. That should fix the problem. Now we'll move on to the text. That should be pretty straightforward. Add a new node to player info box called label. Rename it to nickname, move it and resize it. To change label text, write a text here in the inspector. To change text properties, we'll need to go once more to the theme overrides. Here, for example, we can change text size. Let's try with 28. If you like to change the font, first find the one you're interested in, download it and import it to the project file system. Finally, go to the labels font section and replace empty with the desired font. Great. I will quickly duplicate this label, change its parent node, change position and size, its name and its text to coins. As you can see, the text is aligned to top. To fix that, let's change the vertical alignment to center. Then the same for the coins value text that for now will show question mark symbol. If you like this Godot tutorial so far, please leave a like under the video. Thank you. Time to fill out this empty space under the player nickname. Add a new child node to player info box called progress bar. Call it experience progress. This time we'll use the bottom wide anchor preset. This preset makes sure that the progress bar will scale with the container horizontally. Let's modify the progress bar position and size. Notice that when I hold control, helpful guidelines show up so that I can align the beginning of the shape with the text. 
Now everything perfectly scales on panel resize. While obviously later on you will connect this bar with the game logic, for now we can change its value to something bigger to have a better view of this component. If you like to change the design, we need to revisit our theme override section and change its styles and fonts. Please pause the video and give it a try. Alright, here is my take on this design. Notice that in this case we can modify it font colors, font outline, font family and size, as well as both the slider background and fill area. That way now we got this nice slider. Alright, last but not least, let's add some buttons. I will create a new child of root node called button. Notice that we have a few options here, like a check button, link button and more, but we'll go with this very basic button option. Let's resize it and put it in the middle of the screen using the anchor preset. I will call it Grand Coins button and give it a text Grand Coins. As you can see, that will be our debug button that will change the coins value. As usual, you have a ton of values to modify including Disabled option, Action mode, Keyboard shortcut assign, which I really love, and as usual, all the theming options. Before we'll add some logic to it, I think it's finally time to test out our project. Click on the Play button in the top right corner and wait till the window will pop out. And here it is, our great UI. As you can see, the UI elements are anchored to the top left, top right and the center of the screen depending on the assigned anchors. Perfect! If you'd like to modify the way that the window scaling works, you can go to the project, project settings and here go to the display, window, tab. Apart from changing the viewport width and height, which will be the initial window size, you can also decide if the game will run in the full screen mode, if the window is resizable and more. I'm mostly interested in the stretch section, as it allows us to decide how UI elements will scale. Currently, with the mode disabled, you can see that all of the elements in the game stays with the same size. That's nice, but on the bigger screen, players might find your game UI too small or too far apart from each other. To change that, select mode Canvas Items. That way, all of your elements on the screen will scale accordingly. By default, the game will try to keep its aspect ratio, but you can experiment with that by changing aspect property. Alright, time to work on our button. It already works, you can click on it with a nice state change, but it doesn't do much just yet. This video won't be going much in depth about Godot coding, but here is a very quick guide on how to change coins value on control button press. To create a script for our scene, first select the root component and click this script button. Don't change anything in this dialog window, just press create. Godot is using its own language called GDScript. It takes a second to get used to, mostly because it's indent based, but if you had any experience with Python before, you should feel at home. To define a variable that will hold our coins value, just type var coins value equals zero. As you can see, we already have two functions, ready and process. They work the same way as start and update in Unity. But in our case, we'll need one more function that will be triggered on button press. What we can do is to go to the scene, click on our button and go to the node tab. Here we can see all the signals that this button can emit. In our case, we are mostly interested in pressed action. To use it, simply double click on it and select which script we'd like to connect it to. That will be our root control node. Click connect. That automatically created an on button pressed function, which we can now use to increment coins value. Just type coins value plus equals 10, and then to write it to the console, type print coins value. 
Now when I run the game, you can notice that every button press increments our variable. To change the text on the screen, we also need to connect it to the script. Right click on coins value text and select access as unique name. Now in the script tab, drag in the coins value text, but very important, hold the control key just before releasing the mouse. That way we can now have a nice variable that can be used in our script. So in on button pressed, add coins value text, that text equals str with the value of coins value. str function converts int to string. Additionally, in the ready function, we can also add the same line to reset the counter. Now, when you press play and click the grant coins button, the label text updates with the coins count. Special thanks to all of my patrons for the continuous support of Coco Code. If you like to see more Godot tutorials, let me know in the comment section down below. See you soon.